I would like us to reflect on why study regular expressions. Then we will dive into history and I will introduce you to the practice for this week. In a formal definition, we can define regular expressions as a very powerful mechanism for pattern matching. It enab enables you to restrict pattern matches to very specific values that you define, specific ranges and number of characters and positions. The first question is, why should we study these regular expressions? First, they are widely used in practice. They can be found in major text editors, IDEs such as Emac, WIM, also in Google Analytics. There are several analytical and technology platforms that support them. You can find them in Tableau, Java, Python, and R. And they're very useful to, in fact, match, extract, find, and replace data. So they will fit our data cycle stages, for instance, data gathering, cleaning, and maybe even data transforming. For instance, think of finding phone numbers in your data, transforming dates, for example. I'd like to share with you a data format. This is actually a cartoon that allow you to see a variety of non-standard format. And if you um, did not know, the standard dates format had been introduced in 1988 by ISO. And the standard format was introduced in this specific form. However, what we typically find in our data is a variety of formats. So if we are to deal with our data and the formats are not standardized, we will not be able to proceed with our tasks. So common application I would say for regular expressions, we can ca categorize in the four following uh, steps. Input validation, web scraping, data wrangling, and very simple parsing. So those applications where you could beneficially apply regex in addition to other tools. Where not to use regular expressions, just to avoid complication and spending a lot of time on figuring out patterns, there have been some situations that were suggested by um, senior software developers where other tools, for instance, more beneficial and mature. If you're dealing with HTML, so parsing HTML using regular expressions is possible but not very um, efficient, there are other libraries and tools that exist for that. And one of the reasons is that HTML is not a regular language. It is not built the, as a language that can be expressed using regular expressions. And this is an example of regular expressions that can be translated into regular language. So HTML is not built this way. Parsing source code, there are a lot of tools that create tokenized outputs. So you may check that before you parse your document, for instance, using regular expressions. Sometimes you may want to extract URL path. Using regex may or may not be very efficient. There's uh, different libraries that recognize path of URLs. And email addresses might be very complicated to, to use regex, it is possible, but it, it is hard to predict all the patterns in email addresses. The history of regular expressions did not start with computer science or data science. It actually started with 
neuroscience in logics. In 1943, these two gentlemen published a logical calculus of the ideas imminent in nervous activity, and they were interested to understand why our brain can generate very complex patterns using just simple cells. Moving on to 1956, so this idea was put further and developed further by Stephen Kleene, who developed this model into a simple algebra in his published uh, manuscript representation of events in nerve nets and finite automata. And he introduced sets, regular sets, and regular events, and you may have heard notation Kleene stars. It came from Kleene's development, and he, it is operator in regular expressions. In 1963, Unix pioneer Ken Thompson published regular expressions search algorithm. That's where it became more or less regular expression language that was used by IBM regular expression compiler. And Ken Thompson also used the Kleene's notation in the editor. So that's where regular expressions became known as a part of editor tasks. In 1973, Unix released now a standalone program called Grab for global search and printing of regular expressions. And you can see RE is part of the program. So G for global, P for printing, and RE for regular expressions. 1980, we have a seventh edition of Unix that extended grep into eGrep, which now translated any regular ex expressions into deterministic finite automata and became now what we know regular expressions. It became a uh, part of mainstream in the late 1980s, thanks to Larry Wall's pro programming language. You will have interactive learning platform to use as a part of your practice, Regex On, which will let you go through segments, learning regular expressions and practicing. So in this online platform, you get to see searches, your patterns, and response after you um, add your patterns. So you can see the matches in green uh, after you type your answers. And you can always check for solution. And then if you're satisfied and don't have any questions, you can go to the next segment. Another interactive online platform, interactive practice, regexr. So for instance, if you have a string that you need to match, you can paste and copy inside the text window. Then you can, you can create a pattern and see if that pattern matches the requested pattern. And you can also review the syntax of your expression in the same window that allows you to see whether you um, chose the correct regular expression syntax. Mm -hmm.